The most common tendonitis about the knee is called patellar tendonitis and is also referred to commonly as jumper's knee. As its name implies, this condition is commonly seen in patients who participate in sports that involve jumping or loading their quad, such as basketball or volleyball. Most people with this condition experience pain that's located just under the kneecap, such as someone sticking an ice pick up under their kneecap, and this occurs when they've been loading their knee or after activities. Oftentimes, people experience pain in the front of the knee when they've been sitting with their knee bent, such as in a movie theater or the back seat of a car. Also, swelling under the kneecap is common, but not always present. Like many other conditions involving the muscular skeletal system, this is an overuse condition. What this really means is that there is microtrauma that occurs on a cumulative basis in the patellar tendon, leading to some sort of overuse injury or pain in the area. It's also commonly seen in patients who have been sedentary for a period of time, such as someone who's had a surgery or a trauma or just gone through a long season where they weren't doing much workouts. It's important to remember that patellar tendonitis is not a condition that you can quote unquote play through. Instead, treatment should involve two things. Number one, decreasing inflammation in the tendon, and number two, giving it time to heal. A third objective to treatment is to condition the tendon so that it can absorb the amount of microtrauma that's necessary to tolerate the activity to begin with. When the knee is painful and swollen, it's important to avoid the activities that have instigated the problem to begin with. An anti-inflammatory medication may be very helpful as well if it's well tolerated. Icing the knee when it becomes painful can also be very helpful. As a general rule, I recommend avoiding braces and bands around the knee, as there is no plausible explanation for why these could possibly help this condition. Also, steroid injections or surgical interventions are not typically indicated for this condition, as successful results can almost always be obtained by conservative management. The length of time that you've been experiencing symptoms will be some guide as to how long it'll take you to recover from this problem as well. In the handout that you'll receive in the office, there are specific recommendations about certain activities to avoid and other activities that are encouraged to help overcome this condition. The more disciplined that you can be in following these recommendations, the more likely that you will have a successful and timely recovery from this condition. Thank you for your time in watching this video. I hope it's helpful in your recovery.